What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. We have Ophelia that made landfall earlier this morning as a 70 mile per hour tropical storm pressure of 981 millibars. We also have tropical depression 17 that is formed, and we're paying attention to a bunch of other threats that could potentially be along the way across the tropical Atlantic and Eastern Pacific. So we'll go ahead and jump right into this. So here's what we have going on with the National Hurricane Center we have tropical storm Ophelia, and we have tropical depression 17. We will start with Ophelia since that is affecting a lot of land as of right now. So here's the public advisory as of right now. It is currently 50, has been to 50 miles per hour, pressure of 990 millibars due to land interaction. It's moving north at 13 miles per hour. And its current location is 35.6 degrees north, 77.2 degrees west. So here, that's what we have going on. We still have storm surge watches and tropical storm warnings in effect for several areas over here. In fact, we can go ahead and pull up the map right here. Here's the tropical storm warnings pretty much through much of Chesapeake Bay, all, all the way through parts of the Delmarva Peninsula, all the way down to the outer banks of North Carolina. So a lot of stuff is going on. We still have a long way to go before this thing dissipates at all. And we also have a lot more rain to go. So a lot of the areas that are being impacted are Fayetteville, uh, or Fayetteville, um, Green, uh, Greenville, North Carolina, shout Mr. Beast, uh, Virginia Beach, and a bunch of other areas are right here, and, and even the eastern shore of Maryland and Delaware. So yeah, we have a lot going uh, going on. So we can uh, so we'll go ahead and read the public advisory. Tropical storm force winds extend outward 320 miles from the center. Once again, pressure of 990 millibars. So that's what we have going on with Ophelia based off everything right here. U.S. rainfall potential, we're still looking at 2 to 4 inches for a lot of areas, including Richmond, uh, D.C., uh, including uh, including Wilmington, Delaware, Philadelphia, New York City, all these areas. So, yeah, the rain threat is definitely not over yet. We can go ahead and pull up the radar uh, to give you a better understanding of what we're talking about. Here's the radar as of right here from the latest uh, no, from the uh, from radar scope, the latest radar imagery we have, we have a lot of rainfall still across parts of North Car uh, North Carolina, across parts of Virginia. That's where the center of circula uh, circulation is in NC. Virginia, you have the Hamp uh, Hampton Roads area that's in a bit of a lull as of right now. You have Richmond getting some decently heavy rain. You have Raleigh getting decent rain. Durham getting rain. It's it's quite interesting to take a look at this, and these are also being accompanied with tropical storm force winds, which could definitely down some trees, maybe potentially some uh, some power lines if the, if it's, you're unlucky enough. And if we go ahead and show you the uh, uh, the radar in Loudoun County, yeah, there, we're starting to see some more and more uh, more and more rain bands across D.C., Maryland, and even into western P uh, Pennsylvania, the, the Pennsylvania T over here. You're definitely starting to see a lot of that air, a lot of that uh, rainfall starting to hit. We're all we're going to go ahead and move further to the east. We're starting to see some more rain bands starting to impact New York City, uh, parts of uh, parts of upstate New York over there. So yeah, this is a very expansive threat that we are taking a look at as of right now. So that's what we have going on with Ophelia as the latest. Next thing we're showing you is Tropical Depression 17, which has been organizing and developing for several days. Well, it finally got designated a TD. So here's what we have going on. It currently has winds of 35 miles per hour. The pressure is 1,007 millibars, and it is currently moving, as of right now, due west at 15 miles per hour. Its current location is 15.6 degrees north, 38.8 degrees west, or about 985 miles west of the Cabo Verde Islands. So here's uh, so that's what we have. This is the first advisory from Tropical Depression 17, as according to the cone. This is actually forecast to start strengthening at a very gradual pace before starting to make a turn to the north on Monday. So this thing is most likely going to stay out to sea unless the bridge really starts to build up in the next couple of days and keep this pushing further and further to the west. So that's good news for right now. We'll have to keep an update on it, and we'll keep you, uh, an eye on it. It's expected to get up to 65 miles per hour in the next uh, 120 hours, so very, very gradual development. 
right here and here's what they're looking at right here sh uh, showing a chart apical depression near 30 knots and that's the base of f for the initial intensity since the cyclone's deep convection and formative mid-level circulation are displaced well to the east of the surface center no significant change in, in, its, in strength is anticipated in the short term deep layer shear appears to be very weak but models suggest some mid-layer shear may be responsible for the current structure this shear could lease uh, could uh, lessen by early next week allowing slow intensification to begin in an environment that uh, otherwise uh, would support strengthening. The NHC forecast is very near the intensity model consensus, uh, showing a gradual stre uh, strengthening uh, trend as of right now. So that's the situation we have going on with a lot of these areas right uh, right here with Ophelia and 17. We have a lot more to cover for you guys. And as we get into this active weather period, check out my friends at Prestige Weather Consulting. They uh, they do one-on-one -on -one individual weather consulting catered to your local area. For more information, you can find a link to their website in the description down below. Be sure to use code PREDICTOR for 50% off of your first month. I re highly recommend you check those guys out. They'll do a great job. So with that being said, we're going to go ahead and start moving to some more model right operational models right here. We're going to go ahead and show you the European GFS and all these other threats for any potential stuff that's going on with TD17. Ophelia made landfall, so we'll still cover that for sure. Oh, the center of Ophelia is expected to move through eastern Virginia, impact parts of Maryland, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, and parts of New England with some pretty significant rainfall right here. So they I I would say they would definitely need that, but they don't really need the winds associated with that. So that's some good news right there. Then uh, this gra uh, this gradual intensification, uh, gradually intensifying st uh, tropical system over here, which is TD seventeen, starts to tur make a turn to the uh, to the north, and that's because according to the European, the steering currents just absolutely collapsed much earlier than we were in initially anticipating, uh, even a couple of days ago. So we'll have to pay attention to that. And there's also a bit of a trough that's starting to build up right here. We can show you the five hundred millibar height anomaly. Uh, well, not the five hundred millibar height anomalies, but yeah, you get what I'm saying. So yeah, we have a pretty significant trough that's really built up, and that's what's really driving the steering current more and more to the north right here. So yeah, it looks like the trough, according to what I'm seeing, is going to be stronger than anticipated. So that's good news for those of you in the Antilles. So we'll, ha we'll still have to pay attention to it for sure, as we could potentially see some more th uh, threats down the road. But that's what we have going on according to the European model. Here's the GFS right here. This the zero Z, the twelve Z. Unfortunately, is not all the way out yet. Here's the zero. Here's the zero Z GFS. Similar situation to the European actually, although it's a little bit further to the east than the European was. We were starting to see an absolute collapse of the steering currents, and then we have a strong, a stronger than anticipated trough that's building up and really driving this thing further and further to the north. So this thing's likely going to stay out to sea, but the GFS actually has the strengthening up to a Category 2 hurricane as time continues to go on. So hurricane season is definitely not over yet. We'll have to pay attention to stuff as time continues to go on. GFS is calling for another subtropical system to develop, but I'll be honest with you guys, that's like that starts like, what, 216 hours out? So it's not exactly the most reliable stuff I would rely on, but still wor uh, worthy enough to keep an eye on. The gyre is doing the gyre things. We'll have to monitor that as time continues to go on, see if that becomes a low-pressure system, because that's still definitely a possibility. And as we get into October, the main threat now moves into the Caribbean, and based off of all the ocean heat content that's there, yeah, that is very, very, very insane going into this. So that's the GFS. Here's the CMC model run right here. CMC, Ophelia does the similar situation here. It's Tropical Depression 17. That's gradually organizing, developing. CMC actually gets this down to a Category 2 hurricane in the next six days or so. So we'll have to continue to monitor it as it continues to move further and further to the north and then push further and further east due to the steering currents right there. Once again, there's a bit of a trough that starts to pick it up and push that out to sea. So that's mostly good news for those of you who are living in the Antilles as of right now. So that's what we have for the CMC. Next one we're showing you is the NavGem model. NavGem has a similar situation, although it has a little bit of a... The turn starts a little bit more gradually and then it starts to turn a bit, a bit further and it gets down to 966, 961 millibars potentially a category three intensity as this gets down to 957 millibars as time continues to go on so this is something we need to pay attention to for the near future next thing we're showing you is the icon model 
Icon model, similar situation. All the models are pretty much agreeing that this thing's going to stay out to sea. However, the Icon is also picking up on a new tropical wave that could organize and develop in the next few days or so. That's come. It's the wave that comes it's right after this. It's coming off in the next day or so. So that's a wave we'll have to pay very cl close attention to and see how this whole thing plays out. And we'll keep you updated on that front over there. Now we're going to go ahead and show you some conditions that we're looking at. Global sea temperatures, where this thing is going to start turning, it's going to mainly stay out of this whole 30 plus degrees Celsius water area over here. So that's mainly good news for intensification at the rates as of right now. However, the bad news is that means th this whole area is still very, very, very much untapped right now. And that very, very, very untapped region of very warm water going into October with we're seeing climate models predicting not very much shear and the El Nino really not doing anything until potentially December. Yeah, that could potentially be a pretty big substantiated threat as time continues to go on, especially as storms start to develop in the Caribbean Sea and start eating into this whole huge reservoir of extremely warm waters. And maybe in, even in the main development region, if the high pressure system, uh, the Bermuda High rather, starts to build up and stay sustained enough to keep pushing this stuff further to the west. So that's what we have going on with the uh, the global sea temperatures. Here's what we have with the ocean heat content. The ocean heat content, or OHC, has been incredibly strong across uh, across the whole season. It's been very alarming all season long, and we still have a huge area of 175 to 200 plus ocean heat content across much of the Caribbean, from pretty much uh, the uh, pretty much the extreme southern part of the Gulf of Mexico, all the way down to Haiti and the Dominican Republic. So, th if something starts developing, maybe in the southern part of the system and pushes further to the north, well. Yeah, it's going to have plenty of conditions to work with. We all saw what happened with Adalia. It took, it basically pushed further to the south than anticipated, and then basically started using that OHC to really get its act together before moving further to the north and intensifying as it approached Florida. And then for the main development region, if we see, if we see a tropical wave that pushes further enough west, there's a massive upswing in ocean heat content going into the, uh, going into the western half of the main development region. And as it approaches the Antilles, it gets that's up to 125, 150 OHC in some of these areas. So, yeah, the Caribbean is basically a huge pool for rapid intensification, and it's going to continue for the next couple of months or so as hurricane season continues. Next thing we're going to go ahead and show you is the wind shear. And the wind shear where Tropical Depression 17 is right now, like the NHC says, isn't particularly that uh, bad. However, the shear to the north of it is what's really causing this whole structure, and it's causing it to be more sheared than anticipated. There's like 30 to 49 knots of wind shear to the north of the system and it's going to go it's going to fluctuate it's going to go off and on off and on off and on for the next few days or so however this is definitely something we need to keep a very close eye on hurricane season definitely is not over yet by any regards we're going to keep you updated here on the pat's path predictor channel as more information comes out but with that being said we're going to go ahead and close the video out right here i hope you enjoyed it be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new it helps us out helps us make more videos like these the goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather be sure to check out my friends at prestige weather use code predictor for 50 percent off your first month well, with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.